Assalamu alaikum. Dear learners, in this video, I am going to model and simulate a spring mass damper system using MATLAB. I am going to use various methods, which I am going to explain in a bit, to model this system. And then we will simulate it to see that no matter what kind of technique we have used to model the system, the output would be the same if we have correctly modeled our system. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use three different ways to model the same spring mass damper system. And then using the simulation results, I'm going to show that no matter what kind of or what method of modeling you are using, the simulation results will be the same if you have followed the modeling paradigm or the modeling concepts correctly. So before jumping into the technicalities, let me give you the point wise agenda that what you are going to learn in this video. Firstly, I'm going to talk about what is a spring mass damper system and then we are going to generate its mathematical model. Once we have generated this mathematical model, we are going to implement it using Simulink blocks on MATLAB. And this will be the first way of modeling something in MATLAB. Secondly, we are going to develop a spring mass damper model using Simscape components. Simscape is a toolbox of MATLAB that is used for modeling physical systems in MATLAB. And thirdly, we are going to develop a spring mass damper model using multi-body components. Multi-body is in fact a part of Simscape toolbox, but it deals with CAD models of the object. So once we have developed the spring mass damper model using three different ways, we are going to control the movement of the mass using a PID controller. And over here, I should mention that I won't be talking about the tuning of PID controller in this video because that will be covered in a separate video. So what is a spring mass damper system? In fact, spring mass damper system is an ideal and very perfect second order dynamic system. And by second order, I mean that its differential equation will be of second order. In fact, what we have over here is that we have a mass M and it is placed on a level ground like this. Now let's suppose there is a wall over here and this mass is attached with this wall through a damper and a spring. The damping coefficient of this damper will be B and the spring constant of this spring would be supposed as K. Now obviously if the mass tries to move in this direction, the damper and the spring will pull back the mass towards the wall. So if we apply some force on this mass in this direction, then the mass will move towards the right side depending on the net force that is acting on this mass. And the net force that will act on the mass would be the difference between the force that we applied and the force which the damper and the spring is applying on the mass to pull it back. Note over here that this thing represents the force applied by the damper and you must know that the damper applies the force proportional to the velocity of the object. So that is why I have used x dot over here which represents velocity of the object. And secondly, this one is the force applied by the spring to pull back the mass. And the force applied by the spring is directly proportional to the displacement of the object. So I have written X over here. So this will be the net force that will be acting on the mass. And whatever is the net force that will generate a motion. And according to Newton's second law, force is equal to mass multiplied with acceleration. So depending on the net force, the mass will move towards the right side with an acceleration of x double dot. So this is the mathematical model of this spring mass damper system shown over here. Now all we need to do is we need to model this equation in MATLAB and see what happens. So before I model it, let me draw a block diagram that what I'm going to do and how all the things are going to get together. So I'm going to have a plant which will be our spring mass damper system. I'm labeling it as SMD. 
we are going to apply some force on this system and this system will move and will produce some positional change that is the position of the mass is going to change and I'm going to call it X now this force would be applied on this spring mass number and we will achieve some new position but obviously you can see over here that this is an open loop system and we won't have any control on the output variable that is the position of the mass so what if we want this mass to attain a particular position in a very short time or to exhibit a certain kind of oscillation or to show a certain kind of behavior when a particular force is applied to achieve these things we need to have some controller that will apply force on this spring mass damper system so that we can achieve the desired movement of the system. But for that controller to work, that controller should know that what is the current position of this spring mass damper at a particular time. Therefore, we need this position feedback and provide it to the controller. For example, we have a controller over here. It will generate a force. I am labeling it with C. And this controller needs to know that what is the error or what is the difference between the desired position and the current position of the mass so for example if this is the desired position i am labeling it as reference position and this is the current position which is coming from the output side then subtraction of these two positions will give us the error signal depending on this error the controller will generate a force that will try to move the mass into a position in accordance with the reference position. So this is the block diagram which we are going to implement. So now let's move towards MATLAB and see that how we can model this thing using three different techniques. So over here I have a blank Simulink model where I'm going to implement the model of spring mass damper system using three different techniques. So the first technique is just to implement the equation using Simulink block. So over here I'm going to write the equation that I'm going to implement and it was F that is the force which is applied to the system minus the force applied by the damper and it was B multiplied with X dot that is the velocity minus the force applied by the spring and it was k multiplied with x and this net force was equal to m into acceleration and over here acceleration is represented by x double dot so this is the equation that i am going to implement uh, so let me increase its size so that it is visible okay so this is the equation that i am going to implement over here so the first thing that I need is I need some gains and some adders. So I'm going to start with the adder and I want to have one plus sign and two negative signs because I'm going to subtract this force of the damper and the force of the spring from the applied force. So once I have done that, I will get M into X double dot. And if I divide this thing with one by M, then obviously I'm going to get acceleration. So over here, I'm going to get acceleration. And before this gain, what I'm getting, I'm getting M multiplied with X double dot. So now that I have acceleration at the output side of this gain block, I can integrate it to get the velocity. So I'm just going to add an integrator. So over here, I had X double dot and at the output side of the integrator I am going to have the velocity and if I integrate it once more I am going to have position as well so over here I am going to have velocity that is x dot and on the output side of the last integrator this one I am going to have the position now this position needs to be multiplied with k that is the spring constant and that will generate the force applied by the spring on the mass so i need to have another gain and its gain would be k let me flip it so this position will be attached or will be multiplied with this k that is 
x multiplied with k and it is going to go over here and for this term that is b x dot i need to have one more gain over here and its gain would be b let me flip it once again now I'm going to multiply x dot with b and I'm going to add it over here. Now if I can apply force over here, that would be the applied force. From it, the force of the damper and the force of the spring would be subtracted and I would be left with mx double dot. So essentially this is my spring mass damper system and I have done nothing but implement this equation over here. So now if I want to run it, I need to generate force and to generate force, if you can remember the block diagram that I showed you earlier, the controller needs to generate some force. So I need a controller. I'm going to implement a PID controller and the values of the PID will come from the auto tuning software, which I have written in a separate file and that will be explained in a separate video. So uh, these are the values of PID components that are being generated by my auto tuner. So I'm just going to plug them over here and that's it. So it is a continuous time PID controller which will have this kind of formula and using P, I and D values, it is going to generate some output and that output is going to behave like a force and that force would be applied on the mass and the mass will try to move. So now this controller needs the error signal. That is the difference between what we desire to be the position of the mass and what is the current position of the mass. So to generate the error signal, I need an adder once again and it should have a positive sign and a negative sign. So on the positive side, I need to add a signal for example I'm going to add a step signal that will actuate at time equals to 1 and I'm going to attach over here so this is my reference signal and now I'm going to subtract the current position of the mass from the reference signal and now over here I have generated the error signal so this is the error and the controller will work on this error and will generate some force and try to move the object in the desired position. So this is the first way through which we can model. So before moving on, let us test this thing and see what is going to happen. So to test it, we need a scope. So I have a scope over here and on this scope, I need to see what is the reference position and what is the current actual position of the mass. So I need a reference position from here and the current position is over here. So I need to plot these two signals. So for that thing, I need to have a mux over here. Like this. And I'll supply this mux with these two signals. That is the first one is this one and the second one is this reference signal and I'm going to plot this thing over here. So let's see what is going to happen. And I'm going to plot this thing for five seconds only. So I have written simulation time as five over here. Please note once again that I have defined the mass, that is the M, B, and K in a separate file and the components or the, and the parameters of PID controller are coming from a separate file that I have already run and have saved these parameters on my computer. So now I'm going to run this thing and when we'll run, let's see what happens. So the simulation is complete. Let us look into the scope. So this is the output that we are getting. Let me turn on the legend so that we can see what is happening. So this is the step signal that we generated and we wanted our mass to move like this. That is at time one, we wanted our mass to have a displacement of one meter. So what the controller did, it generated some force so that the mass had this kind of movement, which is shown by this blue curve. So you can see that the mass started moving 
it reached its final position which was the desired position but it went beyond that that is it had an overshoot then it came back it oscillated a bit and then settled around the final position which we wanted so this is how a spring mass damper system is going to behave in physical world if you have the mass which we had the spring and the damper system like the one we have modeled so this was the first way through which you can model a spring mass damper system now let's get on with the next way but before that let me lock this thing down into one subsystem so that it should looks clean and tidy So I have tidied up the things a bit so that I can have a bit of space over here. So this is our Simulink model which we had produced. If you double click on it, you will go inside this block and this is what is happening inside this block. So now let us move to the next technique and in this technique, I'm going to use Simscape components to model the same spring mass damper system. but this time I won't be using any mathematical equation or the differential equation but what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the physical construction of the spring mass damper system so to physically construct this thing the first thing we need to have is a mass so here it is a mass and its mass is m and the other thing we need to have is a wall to which this mass will be attached so I'm going to have a mechanical translation reference. Let me zoom it a bit. So over here, there's a mass. I'm going to rotate it like this. And I'm going to rotate this wall like this. Now I'm going to attach this wall with the mass. But in between these two things, there is a damper. So I will have a damper like this. This is the damper, its damping coefficient is B and the constant or the body of this damper is attached with the wall. So it is attached over here and the, and the other side is attached with the mass like this. Other than this damper, there is a spring as well. So I will have a translational spring like this. Its spring constant is K. So I'm now going to rotate it or in fact flip it so that its constant side is attached with the wall and the other side is attached with the mass. So this is the system which we wanted to model. And in fact, we have modeled it, that set. So it is quite simple and quite straightforward. All we need to do now is to apply some force and sense the translational motion of the mass so to apply the force we need to have a force source and this would be an ideal force source it will generate it will generate a force that is applied on this port over here so let me flip it like this so whatever i'm going to apply on this port this block is going to generate that force and I want that force to be applied on this mass over here. So I have attached it over here and the C port is the reference port and this reference port would be the wall. So I am attaching it with the wall. Now I all I need to do is I need to apply force over here and if you remember our controller is going to generate the force we are going to apply it over here and this block will generate a force that would be applied on this mass now the next thing we need to know is we need to measure the position of this mass as well so we need a motion sensor that can measure the position of this mass so let me rotate it a bit or in fact flip it like this whatever is the motion provided at this R port, the motion sensor will measure that motion. 
and this C is the reference port so once again it is going to the wall and on this V port we are going to sense the velocity whereas on this P port we are going to sense the position and in this situation we don't need the velocity we are only concerned with the position so we are going to terminate this velocity using a terminator so I can use this terminator and let me flip it like this and this velocity will be terminated like this this position needs to be plotted so we need it outside this whole system now as you might have noticed that these blocks are a bit special these blocks are physical blocks and they are nothing like the simulink blocks which we have already used over here these simulink blocks are working on simulink signals whereas these blocks are working on physical signals so we need to convert the simulink signals into physical and then physical signals back into the simulink signal if we want these systems to coexist therefore if we want the force coming from the controller that is let me move these things over here so if we want the force coming out of the controller to move into this block that will generate the force we need something that can convert the simulink signal into a physical signal so we need a simulink to physical signal converter i need to attach this signal with this force point uh, like this but it is not uh, but there is some problem i guess Oh yes, I haven't used a force source, I have used a force sensor. So this is uh, my mistake, I have done something wrong. I have to delete it and I have to use a force source. So here is the force source and um, let me rotate it like this okay so now this signal will be attached over here and this signal will be attached over here so whatever the force the controller is generating it will be converted into the physical system or the physical signal and that physical signal will come over here this force source will generate that force and that force will be applied on this mass so on the other side we need to measure this position and to measure this position, we need to convert this physical position signal into simulink signal. So I need to have a physical signal to simulink converter like this. And this will be attached over here. And at this side, I'm going to have the position data. And now I need to just plot this position data. So I can once again plug this position data into the same mux over here. But I need to have three ports now. So now I'm going to attach this signal over here. So now in this block, I'm going to see three different signals. The first one would be the reference signal, which is this one. Let me move it over here. The second would be the position signal that was coming from the Simulink model that we created earlier. And the last signal would be the position signal coming from this physical system model which we have just created okay over here you can see that we haven't used any mathematics or we don't know that how the system is working all we know that how the system was constructed and we constructed using uh, different simscape uh, components and this is what we have so before I can run it let me enclose this thing into one subsystem so that we can tidy things up uh, it would be like this I guess no, I need to include these two things as well. So over here, I've created a subsystem like this. And this is the subsystem which will contain our Simscape model. So I'm labeling it as Simscape model. There is one more thing that I forgot. That is, we need to attach a solver with this whole system so that the physical model can see that what solver techniques or what mathematical steps or time steps or you can say simulation steps we are going to use. Uh, you can attach this solver configuration block anywhere on this physical system. And that's it, I guess. Now we just need to run it. So the simulation has completed. Let us see what is over here. So this was 
our original step signal and this is the second signal that we got from the Simulink model and this is the third signal that we are getting from the Simscape model. So you can see that both systems are exactly the same. Now let us move to the third way of modeling the spring mass damper system and it is through the use of multi-body components. For generating anything using multi-body components there are certain requirements. For example the first one is that you need to have a solver block over here. So here is my solver block. The second one is the mechanism configuration block and it is over here. What this block does is this block defines the gravity and some other physical properties that are used with the physical CAD model of the whatever system you are going to develop. And the last thing you must have is the world reference frame. Everything which we are going to create will be referenced from this world frame. So these are the three things that are must for every kind of multi-body model. So once we have these things, what we want to do is we want to have a wall, a base and a mass. We will place the mass on the base and we will attach this mass with the wall using a damper and a spring. The first thing is we need to have a wall. For that thing you need to have a rigid body or a solid body in fact. So I have written solid over here. Here is my solid body. You can double click on it and you can access its properties. So right now this body is looking like the one shown over here. But I want this block to represent a wall. So I'll change its dimensions to these dimensions. So now if the dimensions are changed, let me color it a bit to make it a bit more attractive maybe. So I'm choosing this blue color. And now I have to refresh this image to see what I have created. So this is the wall that I have created and I'll attach my mass with this wall. So the next thing that I should do is I should make the reference frame of this solid body and the world frame which is this one equal. That can be done by using a reference frame block. Uh, this is it is this one. I can simply attach this body with the reference block and the world with the reference block as well. Now both of these frames are same and this body which we have just created will have this frame of reference. The next thing we want is we want a base onto which we are going to place the mass and on that base the mass will move. So for that I need one more solid object and this object will represent the base. So I can double click on it and change its dimensions to these dimensions and I can I should also change its color to the same color of the wall or you can choose any other color. So let's suppose I'm choosing this blue color once again. I'm just refreshing it. So this is the wall that I have generated. Now the thing is I need to place this wall right. Sorry this is the base that I have generated and the thing is I need to place this base right beneath the wall. For that I have to translate it or rotate it a bit so that it can be placed right beneath the ball. To achieve this thing I need to have a rigid transform block and I can get this transform block over here. Let me flip it because I need to attach the base with the world frame and then with the follower I will attach my body. So I will attach the body over here and the base will be attached with the world frame like this. Now this body will be transformed through this transform. And the transform that I want is I want to translate this object so that it lies just beneath the wall. I have calculated the things and this is the transformation. I want this body to be translated one unit one meter in x direction, zero meters in y direction and minus 0.45 meters in z direction. So I have done that. So this is all for the base. I can group these things together and call them the base and place it over here. So this is the base onto which our mass is going to move. Now coming back towards the wall. On the wall we should have spring and damper attached and on the other side of the spring and damper we need to attach the mass. So the first thing is we need to make a frame or we need to make the origin where the spring and damper will be attached. And for that 
we need to have a transform block once again. Right now, the reference frame of this block, which is representing our wall, is this one, or it is equal to the world frame. But we don't want to attach the damper and the spring at the world frame. We want to attach it somewhere else. I have to figure it out that where we should attach it, and then we need to transform this transformation block to that point and then attach our damper and spring over there. So once again, I need a rigid transform block and it will be this one. This time the base will be the world frame and I need to move this world frame or I need to have a new frame at a new position and it will be defined by a rotation about Y axis by 90 degrees. So I'm putting 90 degrees over here and I need a translation as well about a Cartesian plane and a translation of zero in X axis, zero in Y axis and minus 0.25 in Z axis. That is I'm moving the world frame a bit downwards. So that's it. This is the frame where the damper and the spring are going to be attached. In multi-body Simscape models, I have a damper and a spring, but over here I won't be using them because I want something like a prismatic joint and that joint will move in forward or backward direction and that will mimic or that will represent the movement of damper and spring. So in fact, using a damper and spring over here, I'm going to use a prismatic joint over here. And this prismatic joint will behave like a damper and a spring. So this is the prismatic joint. I'm going to attach it over here. And on the other side of this prismatic joint, I'm going to attach the mass. So for mass, I need a solid body once again, which is this one. And I need to place this solid body such that it lies on the base. So I need to transform or to move this, translate this body uh, a bit. For that, I need once again a rigid transformation block and it is over here. So the base of this rigid transformation will be attached with the joint and this rigid transformation will place my object or the mass on the base. So let me rotate it or flip it and attach it like this. The rigid transformation that I'm going to use, I have calculated it once again. It would be this one and this means that the object will be moved zero meters in X direction, zero meters in Y direction and 0.35 meters in Z direction. And this will place the object onto the base. So I'm doing that. Oh, I forgot to change the color or the change the dimensions of the block. So I'm using these dimensions, 0 0.3, 0 0.3 and 0 0.3. So this is my block and uh, now I'm going to change its color so that it looks a bit appealing. For example, I'm choosing red color and now let me refresh it. So this is the block which will be placed over here. One more important thing and very important thing is that I need to add inertia to this object because this object should have some mass and inertia because it is going to move. So over here in the inertia portion, I'm going to select mass and it was M. So I have written M over here. So that's it. Now this is the model or this is the multi-body diagram that is representing my whole spring mass damper system. So let me clean it up a bit. So for example, I can jot down these things like this. So this block is now representing the wall. So I'm labeling it as wall and it is attached with the world frame and this thing is representing the base and it is labeled as base and this is the joint and this one is my object. So I'm going to group these things up once again and I'm going to call this thing as mass. So now this is the multi-body model of a simple spring mass damper system. Now all I have to do is I need to apply some force on this object and measure its position. So for that, the force must be applied on the point where the spring and damper is attached with the mass, and that is inside this joint. So for that, I need to make this joint behave like a damper and a spring, and then I'll apply force onto this joint. So for that, double click on it, 
open it and in the portion of internal mechanics you can see the spring stiffness so over here the spring stiffness is k and damping coefficient is b that is the damper coefficient and now i want to actuate this thing using force so in the actuation portion i can select force as provided by input motion will be computed automatically and for the sensing portion that is the position sensing i can open this sensing portion and in this portion i can see a list of variables but i only need the position sensing so i'll take this position and then click ok so now this is the block that is representing the spring and the damper and it will require a force at this port and it will give us the position on this port so what i want now is i want to move this force over here that is the simulating signal of force to this physical signal of force over here so once again if you remember i need a simulating to ps or the physical signal converter and i'll use that converter over here i'll attach it like this and like this so now this force whatever force is generated by the pid controller will be supplied to this block over here and on the other side i need to sense the position and this position will be the sig uh, physical signal and i need to convert it back into the simulating signal so i need a ps to simulating converter once again and i will attach the position over here and this thing over here will be the position and i want this position to be plotted on this same scope so now i need one more port over here so i am going to write 4 over here and now i can connect this position over here so now this is the model which we have made so this is everything so oh, i forgot to attach these blocks over here so these are attached like this to simplify the things a bit i'll enclose these thing in a separate sub system like this and now this sub system will represent my multi body spring mass damper model now all we need to do is we need to run this thing and check what is happening so for running it once again i'm going to run it for 5 seconds and let's see that what are the results so this is the cad model which the multi body has generated this is the wall which is over here and this one is the base on to which the object will move and this is our object that is going to move and this object is attached with this wall through a spring mass damper which is not visible over here but we have placed a joint over here that will behave like a spring mass damper so now as the simulation is complete i can run it and see what happens so this is the actuation and you can see that the mass oscillated about the final position and then settled at this point you can also change the view of this whole figure like this and you can run it as many times as you want and you can see that how the mass is moving and settling on its final position on the other side you can also see the position graph and now we can see that in the legend we have a third fourth entry sorry and it is of multi body model so i am going to close these first two entries of simulink model and simscape model and the last one is of multi body model so you can see that it is exactly similar to the first two simulation result so no matter what kind of modeling technique or the modeling method you are using if you have modeled the system correctly the simulation results are going to be the same so dear learners i hope you have understood three different ways to model the same system the first one was using simple simulink blocks in the second one we used simscape blocks or components and in the third one we used multi body components that generated a cad model and we also saw that how cad model was moving so this is everything from my side i hope you have understood the concepts which i tried to convey in this video if you have any problem and any issues you can always reach back to me through youtube comments or my email address thank you and take care